traveled for 13 days traveling various parts of Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan and this video is divided into various sections so that you can plan your trip with ease. We booked a Fly Eristan flight which directly flies from Delhi to Almaty at 5.30 in the morning and reaches somewhere around 9, 9.30 local time in Almaty. These tickets we make my trip se the. But if you are looking for the cheap tickets, then you should definitely check out kiwi.com and skyscanner.com. We got these tickets for 45,000 rupees for the couple with an add-on a cabin baggage of 10 kgs. We didn't have any check-in baggage ka allowance. Nahi tha. We only carried 10 kgs each to Kazakhstan. Baki sari details about the flights, the visas, the immigration is covered in this video. So don't forget to go and watch it out for my insider tips and various other detailed things that you need to know before you plan your trip to Kazakhstan. The one tip that I want to give you in this video is please, please, please book a window seat on your flight because Pahar ke jo views hain that are mesmerizing, beautiful, beautiful is like an understatement. You can see it on the screen right now. It's like crazy beautiful. Okay, so don't forget to book a window seat on your flight. We reached Almaty. We got out. The immigration was very simple. We just got our visa stamped. And the first thing that we did was to go to an ATM, use our cards and withdraw 10,000 tenge because we knew that we needed local cash. The second up was SIM card. We thought that the airport was a little expensive. Hai, so we thought we'll give it a pass and we'll buy it in the city. Mein ke but that was also a very big hassle. So I recommend that if you're going to Almaty, buy your SIM card from the airport itself. The next step is you book airport se apne Airbnb or hotel So you have three options. You can take the airport cab which is normal. Good evening Chavi. Sorry, I don't know that one. Sorry about that. That's Alexa and I'm going to disconnect her. Okay, so where was I? So the first option that you have is to book an airport cab. Airport cab like anywhere else are expensive. So when we asked him how much would he charge to drop us to our Airbnb, he almost quoted us 20, 25,000 tenge. The second option that we explored was we went to the information center and we asked him about the buses. So he told us where the bus stand is. It was very walkable from the airport. So you walk and you can go to the airport and catch bus number 92 which will leave us on the bus stand which is near our Airbnb. So we thought that we would do this because it was somewhere around 2,000 tenge and it was uh, something that we thought is much better than spending 25,000 tenge right off the bat. We went to the airport, we thought we'll grab a cup of coffee first because we were really tired, we were awake the entire night. And we met this local. Um, this was our first experience with a Kajak local and he was waiting for his girlfriend. We started chatting, he knew English a little bit. We asked him for... Uh, giving us hotspot because we wanted to see how much Yandex Go is charging and he decided that he's just going to help us out so he booked Yandex for us it was around 4,500 tenge we could we would have anyway spent 4,000 if we took a bus and it would have been a lot more inconvenient so we decided we'll just take the Yandex Go it didn't end here so that guy um, called the driver he spotted the cab for us he took us there he made sure that our suitcases are inside and we are sitting inside comfortably he talked to the driver and told him that jana hai and kaha chhodna hai all of that so all this made it very easy the locals there are very helpful guys so if you are going to kazakhstan don't worry and don't don't be ashamed of asking your questions to the local because they'll really go out of their way at least in my experience they they went way out of their way to help me out it was around 11 a.m. हम लोग यहाँ पे पहुँच गए थे यहाँ पे हमारा Airbnb था, which was walkable from this place. अब in Kazakhstan, most of the places that you are going to book, whether it's a B&B, it's a hotel or an Airbnb, the check-in time for each one of it is going to be 2 p.m. So you need to remember that कि अगर आप बहुत पहले आ रहे हो, तो आपको दो दिन के लिए बुक करना पड़ेगा. You can talk to the owner depending on the rules. आप either 50% pay करोगे the room rent का. Ya fir aapko 100% room rent pay karna padega to be able to check in early. Ab ye mujhe pata nahi tha and I did not have internet to have a conversation with the Airbnb owner. To hum log thode se stuck the wahan pe. So we decided ki hum log SIM card sort kar lete hain. The locals asked us to go to Maxim store and get the SIM. But most of the Maxim stores were out of the SIMs. Even if you did get a SIM from any of these stores, the other problem that you're going to face is that you need to recharge the SIM and for recharging the only option is to have a Kajak local bank account, which obviously we will not have as tourists, right? 
तो हम लोगों को दो इंडियन लड़के मिले थे दे वर परसुइंग देयर एमबीबीएस देयर उन्होंने हमारी बहुत हेल्प की दे हेल्प अस गेट द सिम एंड दे यूज देयर ओन कजाक बैंक अकाउंट टू रिचार्ज आवर सिम्स एंड वी कुड वी पेड देम इन कैश तो ये बहुत सारा हैसल है दैट इज व्हाई इनिशियली आई वाज सेइंग कि अगर आपको सिम कार्ड लेना है आप एयरपोर्ट से ही लेके उसको खत्म कर दो बिकॉज़ इन द सिटी इज गोइंग टू बी रियली डिफिकल्ट ये सब सॉर्ट आउट करते करते दो बज ही गए थे सो वी वेंट टू आर एयर बी एन बी एंड वी चेक इन एंड वी डिसाइडेड दैट वी आर गोइंग टू रेस्ट एंड वी आर गोइंग टू स्लीप फॉर अ वाइल छः बजे उठे हम लोग हम लोग तैयार हुए एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट वी डिसाइडेड विल गो टू ग्रीन बाजार सो बाय द टाइम वी रीच ग्रीन बाजार इट वॉज ऑलरेडी ऑलमोस्ट ऑन द वर्ज ऑफ क्लोजिंग ऑलमोस्ट सब कुछ बंद ही हो चुका था एंड इट वॉज रियली डार्क सो वी डिसाइडेड दैट विल जस्ट क्रैप समथिंग टू ईट एंड विल वॉक टू वर्ड्स एंड सी द सेंट्रल मॉस फ्रॉम आउटसाइड From there, we went to the Zinkov Cathedral. We sat there in the park. We admired the beauty of that cathedral. It looked very beautiful um, in the in the night because it was all lit up. वहाँ से हमने decide किया we'll just go early to bed. तो हम लोग वापस अपने Airbnb चले गए थे. On the way, we stopped at a grocery store where we bought a couple of things to eat and to drink, and uh, we just decided we'll call it a day. The next day, that is day two. We woke up early because we wanted to explore the big Almaty Lake. लेकिन हम लोग unfortunately जा ही नहीं पाए because we got stuck with a few things with our Airbnb. Now मैं personally recommend नहीं करूँगी to book an Airbnb for two reasons. First off, we reached our Airbnb at 11 a.m. हमारे पास internet नहीं था and that is why we could not uh, get in touch with the owner. बट अगर आप होटल या बी एन बी या गेस्ट हाउस में रहते सो यू वुड हैव अ रिसेप्शन एंड यू वुड हैव समबडी टू टॉक टू एंड एटलीस्ट टू सेट डाउन एंड चिल एंड रिलैक्स विच वॉज मिसिंग फ्रॉम द एयर बी एन बी एक्सपीरियंस एंड सेकेंड ऑफ ऑल ट्वेल्व ए एम को हमारा चेकआउट था बिकॉज वी हैड अ ट्रेन टू शिमकंत इन द इवनिंग एट सिक्स थर्टी पी एम एंड वी डि नॉट नो हाउ टू डील विद आर लगेज वी हैड टू सूट केसेज टू स्मॉल सूट केसेज सो वी ऑब्वियसली हैड टू कीप इट समवेयर फॉर आर्स टू बी एबल टू रोम अराउंड फ्री दी सो दैट टू एंड फ्रो टू क लॉट ऑफ आर टाइम बिकॉज वी कूडेंट जस्ट कॉल द बी द एयर बी एन बी ओनर शी डि नॉट नो इंग्लिश एंड वी डि नॉट नो कचाक एंड द ओनली वे टू हैव अ कॉन्वर्जेशन वॉज थ्रू द एयर बी एन बी प्लेटफॉर्म तो हम लोगों को बहुत टाइम वेस्ट हुआ इस सब चीज़ों में एंड फाइनली इट वॉज ऑलमोस्ट वन ओ क्लॉक एंड वी रियलाइज दैट द बिग एल मार्टी लेक हैड टू बी चेकड ऑफ द लिस्ट बिकॉज इट्स अ सिक्स टू सेवन आवर्स थिंग एंड वी डि नॉट हैव सो मच टाइम सो वी डिसाइडेड वील जस्ट गो टू द प्लेस वेयर वी कैन तो हम लोगों ने एक कैब बुक किया एंड वी वेंट टू द फर्स्ट प्रेसिडेंशियल पार्क नो द फर्स्ट प्रेसिडेंशियल पार्क वॉज फर्स्ट ओपन टू द कजाक पब्लिक इन टू थाउजेंड एंड इलेवन इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ द फर्स्ट प्रेसिडेंट नूर सुल्तान इट हैज़ अ स्पेक्टैकुलर माउंटेन बैक ड्रॉप और शाम को यहाँ पे फाउंटेन शो और लाइट शोज होते हैं विच यू शुड नॉट बी मिसिंग नाउ वी डिड नॉट हैव द टाइम टू स्टे टिल द इवनिंग बिकॉज वी हैड अदर थिंग्स टू डू एंड वी हैड अ ट्रेन टू कैच बट इफ यू इफ यू आर देयर प्लीज स्टे एंड प्लीज वॉच दैट शो बिकॉज इट्स वेरी पॉपुलर अमंग्स द लोकल्स अदर थिंग दैट वी डिड एट द फर्स्ट प्रेसिडेंशियल पार्क वॉज टू ड्राइव दिस स्कूटर नाउ दिस इज ऑल्सो यंडेक्स फोर स्कूटर बट आर कार्स वर्न गेटिंग एक्सेप्टेड ऑन इट so we went to the information center and we asked the lady there to help us out so she booked it for us and she told she told us to use it for as many minutes as we want and at the end she'll stop it and she'll tell us how much it costs and we can pay her in cash so that's how we were able to ride this bike because you know amit and i were both very excited to do this and it was it was a lot of fun यहाँ से भी डिसाइडेड कि हम लोग फिर से ग्रीन बाजार जाएंगे ग्रीन बाजार इज द सेंट्रल मार्केट ऑफ अलमाटी जहाँ से आप स्पाइसेस, ड्राई फ्रूट्स टेक्सटाइल क्लोथिंग और बहुत कुछ चीज़ें खरीद सकते हो सो इट इज़ समथिंग दैट यू शुड बी गोइंग टू इट वाज एस्टेब्लिश्ड बैक इन 1875 एंड दिस वाज द मेन ट्रेडिंग पॉइंट इन अलमाटी इट वॉज ऑल्सो यूज एज अ गेस्ट यार्ड फॉर द मर्चेंट्स दैट केम ह्योर एटीन में वेन अलमाटी suffered an earthquake everything in the green bazaar was destroyed but later on in 1927 it was restored and finally it came to known uh, it came to be known as coke bazaar which literally translates into green bazaar ki iske piche bahut rich history hai and that is why we really wanted to see this place so we went there spent some time and ate a lot of good food there wahan se we went to the central mosque which is Around 200 meters walking distance. This is one of the biggest mosques in Almaty. We didn't go inside because um, we didn't have the time to go inside. From there, we walked back to the Zenkovs Cathedral. It is also known as Ascension Cathedral. So don't get confused. It's the same thing. It is a Russian Orthodox cathedral that is situated in the Anfilov Park. It was constructed back in 1907, and it is. 
a structure which is constructed with all wood but without any nails. In fact, when the earthquake happened in 1911 in Almaty, this cathedral had minimal damage and people were talking about the divine intervention but it's amazing to see an architecture which is made with wood without any nails and still be intact after such a huge earthquake. So don't miss out the cathedral. We also had a lot of cute fun little activities outside uh, the cathedral. We grabbed these seeds for 300 uh, tenge and we had a chance to feed all these beautiful pigeons out there. Finally, Sham Gaya tha, so we picked up our luggage from the Airbnb and we left to the Almaty 2 station or Shimkant. Shimkant is a really old city. It was found in the 12th century and it was used as a caravanserai um, for the city of Sairam. Now, caravanserai is where all the merchants basically rested. So this city holds a lot of importance in the Silk Route. We had booked a flight board before we booked trains. So we booked a train from Almaty to, to Shimkant uh, city. I will leave the link to the website below where you can book your train tickets. Two things to remember that you need to book a Talgo train because Talgo trains are faster trains and you have more amenities on the train like a restaurant on board and here you will have two segments that you can book one is a coupe and one is a Lux segment so Lux is like the first AC but only two people are there in it and I think they have a separate washroom as well I did not have uh, see what the Lux segment looks like we booked the coupe Coupe is like the first class of our Indian trains where there are 4 seats and you have a cabin to yourself. There are all amenities available so make sure that you book a Talgo train and you can definitely go for the Coupe in it. In the, we had a lot of fun in the train because we met a lot of guys, Indian guys, uh, we met somebody from Russia, we met local Kajak people, somebody from Uzbekistan. And we all had a lot of food, we, had, we drank beer and we had a lot of fun. And this is where we first tasted Manti and Latman and we had a very lavish dinner inside the train and it was really yum. So make sure that you are booking a Talgo train because it's going to be an experience of a kind. The last thing is that um, you don't have to worry whether you'll be missing the train if you get on the wrong train uh, or any similar concern if you have. When the train comes, there are officials that get out of the train and each bogey has its own official and you can go to them and they will guide you on where your train is where your coupe is where your seat is and everything so it's very convenient you don't have to worry a lot when next day that is day three hum log subah subah shimkan pahunch gaye se the. so we booked a yandags go and we reached the bed and breakfast that's the bnb we booked for our stay we booked this for two nights because i have told you earlier that uh, most of the places that you're going to book the check-in time is going to be 2 p.m we wanted to check in at 6 a.m. in the morning and they charged us a 100% room rent. After that, we woke up, we had breakfast. The breakfast was really nice and we left for the city of Turkestan. Turkestan is not only a historical city, it is an archaeological site and a religious site for the people of Kajakistan. So, hum logo ne, uh, the first thing that we did was to book a Yandax Go cab to, a station, to the Big John station. Once you are there, you need to find a Marshutka, that is a shared cab which goes and takes you to Turkestan. The only thing that you need to tell them is Turkestan, Mausoleum or show them the photo of the Mausoleum and they'll understand where to drop you and you're good to go. They will charge you somewhere around 1400 tenge each person. While on this journey, we realize that the people of Shimkant and the people of Kajakistan are in love with two people or maybe in love with one person and hate the other one. But it's Genghis Khan and Mithun Chakravarti. Now, Genghis Khan is infamous in Kajakistan because he tried to destroy the sh uh, city of Shimkant multiple times. And people love Mithun Chakravarti uh, so much so that when in 2010 or 2011, when he came to Kajakistan, there were millions and millions of Kajak people ready to welcome him and shower him with love. <laughs> So finally, after two and a half hour ride in the shared cab, which was very convenient, it was uh, a nice car, we reached the Koja Muhammad Yasavi Mausoleum. Now, this mausoleum was built during the time of Timur. However, when it was yet under construction, Timur died and that is why it was never finished. However, the most important part about this entire site 
is uh, that Persian builders and the masters did a lot of experimentation with a structure and architecture which was later used in the city of Samarkand and that is why if you, if you go to Samarkand you will find similar structure. The other fascinating thing that you will find within the campus of this mausoleum is an underground mosque which was a cave that was used by Muhammad Yasawi himself. So the next surprising thing that I saw there was the double hump camel. I have never seen in my life mein double hump camel. So, um, that was another thing that you will get to see there. Now, once you have gotten around the campus of the mausoleum and you want to go back to Shimkant, you will go to bus stand first. So, from the mausoleum, we booked a cab to the Meri bus stand that took us, that took uh, 540 tenge. And from there, we uh, got a marshutka back to the Shimkant city for 1500 tenge. It will not drop you at the Big John bus station where you originally went to but it will drop you somewhere inside the city. Now, once you reach there, you can take another cab and go to your BNB or your hotel. It was almost evening and it was really dark by the time we reached our BNB from Turkistan. So we decided that we are going to try out Yandex, eat and order something in. Only to realize that they don't accept cash and it was really late night, so we didn't know where to get food. So we went out and met this guy called Noor who was on an official visit from Astana to Shimkan city. He's originally from Shimkan city. He helped us out. He called his friends and he ordered two things for us. One was shashlik and the other one, other thing was pilaf. Pilaf is their uh, traditional biryani, which is a little sweet, but it is really yum. Shashlik is basically barbecue. He ordered things for us and uh, we paid him in cash. Finally, next day, uh, subha subha, I wanted to uh, get over with the payment of the BNB, but I realized that they only had tap and pay and my cards weren't working with tap and pay. So we took a cab and we went to this bank called Helic Bank. Uh, I had a good experience with them because they gave me good currency conversion rates and, and my cards always worked in their ATMs. So whenever I was in need of cash, I always went to the Helic Bank. We came back, checked out and uh, paid our dues to the BNB. We booked a Yandex go to Aksu Zabagli and we found this taxi driver called Muhammad Ali. Now, he was also very sweet. Um, he went out of his way to help us out. So when we got in and we told him we wanted to go to Aksu Zabagli, he told us to cancel the Yandex go because it will charge you extra commission after a certain miles. Or I think Aksu Zabagli comes beyond the territories of Shimkant. Some, he, he tried to explain us something in Kajak. I did not understand it. But the bottom line was that it's going to be much more than 12,000. So he and we agreed of the Yandex Go app that he's going to take us to Aksu Zabagli in 12,000 tenge. Alternate way to reach Aksu Zabagli is to take a go to the Aina bus stop from Shimkant. From there, take a bus to Yulku bus. From there, you will get a marshutka or a shared cab to Zabagli and they'll drop you somewhere in the city. And from there, you need to call uh, your guest house owner or wherever you are staying you can call them up and uh, arrange for a pickup so this seemed and uh, this seemed like a lot of hassle to me personally and 12,000 tenge was something that I could afford giving to a cab so I decided I'll just take the Yandex go so in Aksu Zabagli we stayed at this place called Ruslan's guest house it's run by him his wife and his two children and his two dogs Laura and Lady uh, they are lovely, lovely dogs. They are very friendly. They took us around the entire campus and went hiking with us and took us to spots where in Yoko we could enjoy the beauty and the entire uh, views of the city. Now, Aksu Zabagli is one of the largest reserves, natural reserves in Kajakistan. It is one of the largest and one of the oldest natural reserves of Kajakistan. And you'll be mesmerized by the beauty of it. So if you can, please do plan going to Aksu Zabagli for more than one day. Now, if you're staying at Ruslan's guest house, it's going to cost you somewhere around 21,000 tenge for each person. So it costed us 42,000 tenge for one night. This included all the three meals. So breakfast, lunch and dinner. Ruslan and Ruslan's wife cook for the guests that come. And everything is homegrown. So you will have a truly organic experience wherein, you know, the cherries, the berries, um, the dry fruits, apple, everything that she made was homemade. And it was really, really yummy. We reached this place quite late. So we, I think we reached this place somewhere around 12.30 or 1 in the afternoon. And we could not do any of the activities that could have been done. So there are 
places where you can hike you can also go horse riding and all of that but you need to be accompanied by rangers so it's uh, additional cost you can see it on the screen but if you are going to Aksu Zabagli, I recommend that you make the time to do these activities because Aksu Zabagli is a very big nature reserve and it's in the backdrop of the Tian Shan Mountains, which are splendid when you look at it. By the evening, uh, we wanted we wanted to sort out how we are going to go to the Zibek Zoli border the next day because we were going to Uzbekistan. So we called up Muhammad Ali, we fixed a time so that he could come and he could take us to the border. He charged us 20,000 tenge. When we asked Ruslan how much does it generally cost, he told us 40,000 tenge is what the cost will be if we did not, um, if we asked him to set up a cap for us. So we decided that, you know, obviously 20,000 sounds much better. So we decided we'll call Muhammad Ali. It took us somewhere around three hours. Now, the one thing that we realized while doing this was um, from Aksu Zabagli, when we were going to the border, we had to cross Shimkant. So instead of going from Almaty to Shimkant and Shimkant to Aksu Zabagli, we, we, could have, um, we could have used the same train but got down at the Yuklu bus station because it came in between. So it would have been Almaty to the Yuklu bus station and from there we could have gone to the Aksu Zabagli nature reserve. From there we could have then gone to Shimkan, Turkestan and then took a shared cab and go to the border. That would have been much more in line with how Kazakhstan is. So this is something that we missed out and if you are planning the way we did, then I would recommend this one change. Now once you are at the border, it's going to take you approximately 45 minutes to cross the border. And the one thing that you need to remember is if you're going to be changing currency, that is if you're going to be changing Tenge to Uzbekistani Som, you're going to do this on this side of the border. Once you cross the border, I did not find any anybody who was converting the currency. Now, this is all about the first five days of our trip to Kazakhstan. The next few days we spent in Tashkent and Samarkand before we went back to Almaty, where we explored more of Almaty and then went to Sati. So we, I'm going to be covering that in the next few videos. But if you have any questions, do comment below and let me know. I will love to answer them and I will love to include your questions in the next videos. Till then, see ya.